We all know he, he lived in a subpar facility in Mexico, and there, I don't think you could find anybody who would argue that that was a good situation. I mean, he definitely needed some help and needed to be, uh, you know, have those conditions improved. Um, but to jump, to make this leap to the idea that, you know, he could swim off into the sunset and, and rise to meet the challenges of a, a harsh and unforgiving wild after spending 20 years um, in the care of man, that's where, this, that's where the disconnect is. Despite access to the wild, despite every attempt to, to uh, integrate him with wild killer whales, he chose man. Now, why is that? It's because that relationship was immensely positive, not because it was punitive, not because it was dominion, not because it was food-based. It was because that's what he chose. You know, life in human care is different from the wild. It is not a lesser life. It is a different life. And that animal's learning history really dictates what its capabilities are to survive in many different environments. So, you know, Keiko, like all of SeaWorld's whales, he spent his entire life building relationships with humans, humans that coddled him, that loved him. Uh, throughout the entire release process, he never, ever broke that resolve of seeking human uh, attention and interaction. That's what he knew, that's what was familiar to him. Throughout his entire life, again, I'm going back to learning history, regardless of whether it was Oregon, Iceland, North Atlantic, or Norway, people and relationships were all Keiko sought. He had access to the wide open ocean, he had access to wild whales, many hundreds of times. He never failed to choose his human foster family because of a very positive learning history. It doesn't have anything to do with the size of his pool, which I didn't like. I agree with that. But it doesn't change his relationship with humans.